Many consider Sue Richards to be the most powerful member of the Fantastic Four. Her force fields enable her to stand against the strongest of supervillains. And without force fields, the Enterprise wouldn't last more than a minute against a Klingon bird of prey, and the Empire would have fallen a lot sooner to that upstart band of rebels. But sadly, a force field is just something found in comics, movies, and galaxies far, far away. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward, and I've heard military strategists and football coaches say that the best defense is a good offense. I would argue that the best defense is an invisible energy barrier capable of withstanding every and any assault brought against you. Force fields have been a science fiction staple ever since they first appeared in E.E. E. Doc Smith's work in the 1930s, but they've always been a purely fictional concept until 2002. That year, Britain's Defense Science and Technology Laboratory tested a new type of tank armor that had a supercapacitor built into it. It was designed to protect against RPGs. That's rocket-propelled grenades, not role-playing games. But role-playing games can also be very dangerous. One of the players Robbie played with got carried away and killed him. Well, that's kind of far out. Mazes and Monsters is a far out game. When an RPG hits a target, it releases a jet of molten copper that can penetrate more than a foot of solid steel. Most military vehicles can't carry that much armor, and those that do lose a great deal of mobility. The supercapacitor armor is a lightweight alternative. It works by turning the tank into a giant battery which can store a significant electrical charge. When an RPG penetrates the outer layer of armor, it completes the circuit created by the supercapacitor. This causes the stored electrical energy to be dumped and creates an instantaneous electromagnetic field. The EM field then vaporizes the copper inside the RPG and prevents it from penetrating any further. More recent designs have incorporated early detection elements that would trigger the field before penetration and repel the projectile before it made contact with the vehicle. This force field is specifically designed for RPGs though. Normal armor would still be used to protect against bullets because the EM field would only work in short bursts and not be constantly sustained. Also, most bullets are made of lead, which is magnetically very weak, so an EM field wouldn't be very effective in repelling them. And since you can't tell a bad guy what type of weapon to bring to a fight, you're gonna need a more all-purpose force field. Something like the Enterprise has. You want a shield that will protect against all forms of weaponry, including laser beams. That's what a group of physics students at the University of Leicester have come up with. Using theoretically proven principles, they've been able to show that an electromagnetic field could be used to hold in place a layer of superheated plasma. The plasma would melt any matter-based projectiles and then could deflect lasers by changing the plasma's frequency to match that of the laser. The problem with this is that your force field would work both ways. If you oscillate the frequency of the plasma to deflect against a visible laser, you would also be blocking yourself from seeing that visible light outside your force field, as well as all the wavelengths lower than visible light. So if you were shielding yourself against a blue laser, you wouldn't be able to see the colors of red, green, or yellow outside your shield. You also wouldn't be able to receive radio waves because radio waves oscillate at a lower frequency than visible light. This would make communication difficult. You could get around this though by using an ultraviolet camera to see through your shield. The other problem is your magnetic fields need to be very strong and require a great deal of energy, currently making this type of force field impractical. But room temperature superconductors, which I explain in my Powers of Magneto episode, could change all of that. Many believe that room temperature superconductors will be available to us before the end of the century. With these, we could create incredibly powerful magnetic fields with much smaller magnets and much less energy. It may even pave the way for not just starship deflector shields, but your own personal force field. Until that time, I'll have to rely on my cat-like reflexes. Arguably, they're closer to that of a 
overweight tabby and less so a jungle tiger, but they are most certainly cat-like. Speaking of man-like cat creatures, the book I'm listening to this month is Larry Niven's Ringworld, which I downloaded from audible.com, the sponsor of this episode. Ringworld is about two futuristic humans and two incredibly awesome aliens that set out to explore an artificial world that's been created in the form of a ring around a star. It's a sci-fi classic and Hugo Award winner from the 70s, and I'm really enjoying it. If it's your first time getting a book from Audible, you can download Ringworld or any one of their over 150,000 titles for free by going to audible.com rusty. So if you haven't been to Audible and you love sci-fi, fantasy, horror, or even biography, history, or classic lit, go to audible.com rusty and download your free book. Thanks so much for watching and supporting my series. If this is your first time here, subscribe and check out our previous episode, and be sure to tell me what superpower you want.